Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about encrypting the drive pools in FreeNAS to protect your data. Now, I'm Ron Nutter, and we'll be working on this together. You're going to see two different ways to protect your data because depending on what your concerns are or what you want to protect yourself from, you may want to go to the second option. At a minimum, you should do the first one, just as a matter of general principle. We'll go into more of that later. This content is available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this episode. There are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, here's what we're gonna do. We're first gonna go over encrypting the pool when you create it. This is really probably the easiest way to do it. I'm looking at an option where you can do it post pool creation, but it's gonna take a lot longer. And from what I've been seeing so far, there is a chance for possible data loss if you don't do it at the time you encrypt, I mean, the time you set up the pool. Then we're gonna look at adding a passphrase. Now, the passphrase is an additional level above just encrypting the volume. If you just encrypt the volume, what will happen is that's great if a single drive fails, you can send the drive back to the manufacturer and then you don't have to worry about any data harvesting off of the single drive because it's going to be encrypted as a part of the entire pool. Now, let's face it, criminals are getting smarter and this is where the passphrase comes into the process. And, there, and there's some trade-offs with that. With the passphrase, you have to wait for FreeNAS to come up and you'll have to enter the passphrase and then it unlocks the volumes and then can see, continues on with the startup process. Now here's the catch 22. If you've got other services depending on that and you're not there to put the passphrase in, everything comes to a complete halt until those volumes get unlocked. So Consider this, and I've heard this mentioned on, on one of the other uh, YouTube videos you'll find on this subject, is do the encryption of the pool when you create it. I mean, that, that's easy. Only if you have very sensitive data that you want to make sure that is, you know, never has a chance to be harvested, do, would you then just implement the passphrase, say like when you're leaving for the weekend. Now, if you're in a business in a downtown area, then yeah, you may have to leave that permanently enabled. Again, it's a matter of your level of concern. You, when you would say, well, I really don't have that much on there. When you stop to think what may be on there, tax returns, financial information, then you probably do want to have it encrypted. Unfortunately, the criminals are getting smarter now, so this is where the passphrase will come into it. So you, there's no one right or wrong answer. You can just see how it goes and get used to it. Keep in mind that when you do add a passphrase or take the passphrase off, you need to back up your configuration and the configuration key. That way, you're going to have a good chance or really shouldn't have any problem with rebuilding the system if something happens. If you lose that passphrase, you're basically up a river without a paddle because you're not going to be able to get to it. Anyway, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get on into the setting up of the pool. So we'll go over here and go into storage. We will go into pool. And we'll click add because we're adding up a new pool. So we're going to set create new pool. All right, that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to call this one main because this is going to be the one I use for most of my non-YouTube stuff. And we're going to enable encryption. And here's the warning you're going to get every time that you go to do this. And it's not just something you click past. You have to click on confirm and then click I understand. 
Now, we're going to tell it to suggest layout, and that's just because I'm being lazy. I'm going to let FreeNAS move everything over. So at that point, we've got the pool named. We've told it to set up encryption. We've done suggest layout, so it just moves everything already over. And we will click on create, and it's going to erase the drives. Okay, that's fine. Now this is, it may take, okay, here we go. It's already set up the key. So what we want to do is when we download the key now and see each pool is going to have its own encryption key, which is good. So we'll click save and click done. Really, that's, that's all that it takes. Okay, now you've seen what it takes to just encrypt the drive. And if that's all that you do, you've at least got some protection in place. So if somebody yanks a drive out or you've got to send one in to get it replaced because it has failed. And I've got a whole nother video already done on get, how to get yourself early warnings to when a drive is about to fail or hopefully you'll get it before it has failed. Anyway, that will help you from somebody harvesting just a single drive. Now, if you really want to add an additional layer of protection, now is what we will have to put on is called a passphrase. That does mean that you have to re-enter that key, or passphrase rather, when you start up FreeNAS. And it's not gonna, it will start up, but the volumes won't mount. Anytime you do anything with the drives, you're gonna have to remember to back up your configuration and back up the key just in case something has changed. And if you, if you need to back up the key, it should be warning you, but I err on the side of caution. I'm gonna back up configuration and key anytime I have to touch anything about the drives just to be on the safe side. So let's move back over that and we'll go to the next process. All right, so now we're back at the screen where we now have the second volume and that what we'll call main. Now we're at the main screen where we're going to add the passphrase. So if you notice when you've encrypted the volume, you now have a little lock over here and it refers to encryption operations where the one down here that I put all my YouTube stuff on doesn't have that. So we'll click on that. We will go to encryption key. Now, just to protect it from somebody doing something that they shouldn't, it wants your root password. And then what we will do is enter in a passphrase and see it warns you right up here when you create a passphrase it invalidates the uh, existing pool recovery key file so we will create passphrase and it may take it just a second here to because it's got to go out and touch the the entire pool okay that's not bad and see it's already it's already telling you you need to download the encryption key so we're going to do that and then we will click done and we don't need to have that and passphrase created okay so recovery key is an additional key so it wouldn't be a bad thing to do so again we will put in the root password and we will add Okay, deactivate the key, at, at recovery key. Okay, add recovery key. All right. And I want you to store it in a safe place, recovery key. All right, it's... Okay. So that really is, is all that it takes. So now the downside is, is when you restart this, it's going to come up as... A locked situation so you'll have to go in and add that so let's go ahead here and we are going to tell it to restart oh let's see okay I've got it saved all right yes let's double check before we go down the rabbit hole here and okay there are there's my encryption key and that okay we're we're good i just wanted to err on the side of caution so confirm restart all right so now we'll switch over here 
and you can see it's in the process of shutting down. I wouldn't expect it at this point with the with my main volume being pretty much empty at this point. I wouldn't expect it to take much longer to get started up with, you know, just the first level encryption. But it's always good to test it and even if you have more than one pool getting it to uh, it, it doing fully encrypting everything may be something that you, you don't have to rush into. It's a, a matter to me of where your most sensitive information is. So if it's financial, uh, medical records, anything like that that don't need to be out in the public eye, at a minimum, go ahead and enable the pool encryption and then consider doing a passphrase if for, for, the vol for the pools. I keep going volume, and I think in terms of volume because I've dealt with the uh, EMC and the, and the higher end commercial system. So I, I have a tendency to think in in that manner. I'd just be glad I haven't started talking about LUNs. Logical unit uh, number, I believe. So that's the way you present storage to a server. At least that's the term that I'm I'm used to. So we should be up here in just a second. Okay, the Ethernet card has come up. Okay, now that we've got FreeNAS rebooted, let's go ahead and get logged back in. And we'll click close, and we'll go down here. And see, main is offline because the password hasn't, the passphrase has not been re-entered. And the YouTube one came up just fine. So we'll go to storage, pools, and we'll click down arrow we'll click the lock and then we will do uh, enter the phrase or actually enter enter the yeah enter the passphrase that was the the right thinking and it's been unlocked now if for some reason it had a failure then that's when you would go in and well, we can tell it to lock. We can simulate that right now. So we're going to lock the pool. Which essentially is taking it offline. So if you've got information on it and you have to leave, but you don't want to take everything down, this would be an option to do it. Now, say for some reason you've entered the passphrase and you can't remember that it, it's, it keeps rejecting it. Now, this is when you would go into the recovery key. Let's see what it says, recovery key. Okay, that's fine. And now, again, this is something that you would want to keep this in a separate place from your other key because this is a backup key. So we'll click on unlock. And it's been unlocked. So all your services are going to be back. I've got to add the service because this is a newly created volume, but you can see what it takes to, to get things done from there. So really, it's very straightforward. At a minimum, encrypt your volume when you're creating it. And if you are want to take the ultimate in concern and precaution, go ahead and consider doing a passphrase. You've seen what it takes to do it here. So that will just get you one step ahead of the game in it. I'm not going to say it's 100% guarantee it can't be cracked, but you're going to at least make it difficult enough that by the time they would be able to get in, if they could get in, then the, the value of that information is going to be far less. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see videos on the screen now that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.